The year is 1998. You just finished school. You and your friends are jumping on your little push bikes and you're riding home as fast as you can. Because you know, the day before, you and your mom went to Blockbuster and rented a brand new N64 game, Zelda Ocarina of Time. You race through the door, you shove that cart into the console, you flick that switch on and you hear... I can't even begin to tell you how nostalgic that sound is to me. Nintendo 64 has finally launched on the Switch as part of the online service that you have to pay quite a bit extra to get the expansion pack to add in these 64 games as well as Genesis games and then somewhere down the line even Animal Crossing DLC. The big question is, is it worth it? Something I've been asked a bunch since the price was announced in an Animal Crossing Direct and something that I haven't officially made a statement on other than one tweet. The reason why I haven't said anything other than that is because, well, it hadn't released yet. And I feel like before judging it, before, you know, I say something that I haven't even bought or have experienced is worth it or not, I should probably, you know, buy it and then find out. It's very, oh, it's very, I have a lot of thoughts here. Let's go over everything you get and how much it costs. It, oh, we'll get there. Cause this service, uh, it, it already has a lot of issues that have people talking. A lot of people are upset, but also a lot of people are perfectly happy. So what, why this massive disconnect between experiences, you might be asking. Hi, Sponsor Wood here. I know I look pretty indistinguishable from regular wood, but I, I guess I get paid a little more. <laughs> First off, I need to apologize, because usually in my sponsor spots, I like to create fun skits or gags, but I got two conventions to go to this month, and I just don't have time for any of that. So I'm just going to do this one nice hey, and so normal. I, an I just said no funny business. Sorry. That's okay. Not you. Today's sponsor is ExpressVPN. Imagine going to an all-you-can-eat buffet, but they only let you eat like half of the stuff that's there. That's what it's like using Netflix without ExpressVPN. Did you know that by using ExpressVPN, you can change your location and then access shows and movies from other regions? Modern Family, South Park, Rick and Morty, Studio Ghibli, you name it. All it takes is one easy click. Once you download ExpressVPN and you're out there binge watching every Rick and Morty to your heart's content, ExpressVPN will already be at work protecting your privacy and security by creating a secure encrypted tunnel that funnels your data, protecting it from data mining and giving you peace of mind while browsing the internet. The other best parts are, it won't slow down your internet, it's the number one rated VPN, and you can get three months of ExpressVPN free right now by visiting expressvpn.com forward slash beat-em-ups or clicking the link in the description below. Alright, back to regular Brokewood. <laughs> So the online normally 12 months is $20, but you can pay month to month for like $4 a month. And this is all in American. I don't know where you are. I'm sure it's different. Hello, other countries. For the expansion pack, however, it jumps up to a whopping $50. Which is a lot more. That's kind of... Right off the bat, that was a shock. Because in the original, I mean, you get the online service, the very average online service, which when this whole pay for Nintendo Online came out, there was sort of a hope that, okay, well, it's been free for a long time, so that's why it's been bad. So if you're charging us now, that means it's going to get good, right? Nothing has really changed. So let's take a look at what you get with the Nintendo 64 online. Now, I have gone to settings here, and I've switched it to both NA and EU versions, which is kind of cool that you can do that. It brings up box art for all the games. Let's turn that off. So this is what you get with the, the N64 online. 
Ocarina of Time, sick. Star Fox, awesome. Win back, underrated. Super Mario 64, fantastic game. Game changing game. Yoshi Story, it's got Yoshi. And then you also have Mario Tennis and Dr. Mario. Uh, and apparently this game is really good. Sin and Punishment, I'm gonna have to play that. I've never heard of it, but everyone keeps saying that it's really good. But on top of this, the really, really cool part is you can create an online lobby with up to three friends. And then you can load up Mario Kart 64 and play split screen Mario Kart online. And uh, my friend Bob from Wolf Den and I played every course, or every cup last night on stream and it worked flawlessly. You joined beat em ups. Bob has come to play. Let's move. go. Ooh, I can move the cursor. Can you see that? Yes. Uh, that how is... do I do it? Oh, you have to hold <laughs> right. Yeah. Yay. Yeah, great. <laughs> great job, Wood. That was great. Great job, great Bob. Laugh. I'm so proud of you. Look at us. This is I don't steal pretty player, surreal. Man. Okay. No. Oh, everything I was looking oh for. You're towards. in second. <laughs> How did you get up there? How is first blitzing it so much? Oh, see ya. Never mind. Come on. Is this the last lap? No. Come yeah. on. <laughs> well, it works That's pretty good. That's why I would have went with me. <laughs> but they did it. Like no lag or anything. No like. No, it's good. It, it worked perfect. Is Moo Moo Meadows? This is my favorite map. I haven't, I haven't missed a beat, and I can't get anywhere near him. Oh no! Yes! Don't. Yes! Yeah! No! <laughs> God, fair play. Oh no, this bus! Get absolutely wrecked. No, that was the worst thing that happened. Get absolutely wrecked. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Carded. There's no way I should have got away with that clip. Oh, what wow. just happened? No! Something else just happened, didn't it? Call me Thor, because I got the thunder! <laughs> oh my god, why? You're in fourth! Stop getting that! <laughs> I started saying that before I got it. Stupid dinosaur. Thunder! <laughs> Somebody stop the green Mario. <laughs> oh. oh, you suck. Yo, oh, oh my god, whoa. Donkey Kong got in front whoa. of me and stopped. I have to do really good this one, and you have to do really bad. Chat. I might not even come first. Like, I might if be- If you win, some people in this chat are gonna make a lot off of their predictions. <laughs> no! Wait, <laughs> what? Was that the total? Imagine not even, like, ending up there. I placed higher than you on, on like, three out of them. That's... That's... What happened? Top three, baby. You're what? Only... Somebody You're in only... chat explained <laughs> to me what happened. You're only as good as your last recount. game. <laughs> Like that was actually a surreal experience. We got in each other's lobbies right away, didn't have any connection issues. In fact, at one point I wanted to switch controllers. So mid race, I paused the game, went out to my switch home screen, changed controllers, went back in and we just kept playing. Like that, it didn't break the connection or anything. The online is, is honestly perfect. We also tried Mario Tennis. Ball? How about you serve me a good one? Are you? I don't like this. So all that's great, uh, but then we we do start to to bump into some issues. Some small, some large, some depending on who you are. It will matter or not. Uh, the first one is just the emulation is sketchy. I would say at best. I mean, some people think that it's terrible. I'm a pretty general consumer of games, and for me, these games work, and I'm not really noticing too many issues, but there are some that stand out more than others. Last night while Bob and I were playing Mario Kart, half the tracks would ju that just would stop playing the music. Like it was dead silent. The courses had no sound. It was really eerie and weird. In fact, on Rainbow Road, the sound kept cutting in and out. Where's the music? Yeah, I'm thinking there's like a glitch because we didn't get music on the, on the second to last one either. Bad emulation? <laughs> Didn't break. Oh, well, it's back. Yeah, I was gonna say it just cut in. I, I think, I think, I think the emulation's bad. Yeah, and that's not what you want. That's that's a bad one for sure. Like that's that's an upsetting one. There's others like uh, in in Ocarina of Time. There's no fog, which I don't know if that's a weird emulation thing or a weird choice. But that was just I don't not. It's not there. It's a, it's a it's an element of the game that's not there. 
And I'm sure as people play more of these games, they might start to realize other things. But something that Bob realized and I realized is the first thing I loaded up was Zelda. Because I love Zelda. First thing Bob loaded up was Mario 64 because he loves Mario. But if we go to the controls, they've mapped them really weird. And for Zelda, it was fine, honestly. But for Mario, it's backwards. Because it is actually backwards. So they've made B and A, B and A on the Pro Controller. Which makes sense. It'd be kind of confusing if they flipped those so that A would be B and B would be A. Like, that, that, would, that would be confusing. But it is actually flipped on the 64 controller. Like, which is fine in Zelda, actually. It actually makes it better in Zelda because you press A to interact with things. You press A to read signs. You press B to exit reading signs. Also, you press A to roll. Like, it feels really organic, and honestly, it makes sense with it being that way for Zelda. But for Mario, it's backwards. I have to press B to read this sign, and then A to back out of reading the sign. Jumping is A rather than B which feels wrong. In fact, if you load up Mario All-Stars, another game on Switch you can well, you could pay for before they removed it, the control scheme is the right way round, where B is jump and A is... So it's, it's literally backwards in this, making the 3D All-Stars version technically the more correct version and the better version. It's weird that they decided to do that and not give, like, different mapping options. Like, this would be fine if there was a way to switch between control schemes and switch the B and the A so it wasn't backwards. Also weird, they made X, the down, the C stick down. That's that's weirdly confusing. Well, you, you might be fine with it and you can get your head around it, but I think pretty much everyone is on the same page with that's a really weird way to do that, Nintendo. So yeah, the emulation isn't perfect. The button layout is weird. Honestly, both of those things I'm not too worried about. Like, I do think it's weird, especially when you're charging a lot for the service. I can, I can get around it. I actually haven't even booted up Genesis yet. Here's something I find strange about the Genesis side of it. I think it's great it was added, but a lot of people have had a theory that because it's Sega, Sega. as I was saying, Nintendo had to charge more to pay Sega like royalties for having the games on the service, which is why it's so expensive. That's a theory people have, which is a really weird thing if that's true, because I don't know if you know this, but all these games other than I think two were already on Switch, either in collections or or just standalone like $5 releases on the eShop. You could already play all of these on Switch. So if it's true that Nintendo had to charge more for these to have them free, I don't know. That's weird. That would be a weird business move, I think. So now that you've seen all of that, let's talk about my thought process here on whether this is actu actually worth it. It really all comes down to you and what you want from the service. If you legitimately want to play most of these 64 games really badly, and it's like exciting for you to sit down and play Zelda and Mario and Star Fox again, then $30, like $10 a pop for these games to, to have them on your Switch, sure, you know? It, it, it literally depends on the person, I feel, you know? If you're fine with those experiences, the way they've been delivered, then sure. But I feel like it is a very specific, you know, person right now that would w really want to play multiple of these games really badly to fork out $30 up front because you can't go month to month. You have to pay that either that 50. Maybe you don't even care so much about 64 or Genesis, but you're really excited to get Animal Crossing Happy Home Parrot. I'm really excited. That's $25 standalone. So if you can reach out and spend this 50 for the online, you get that. And then you get all the other stuff too. Then that's a really good deal as well. And the drawback with that is you could just buy it for 25 and then have it. If you buy the online to get it and then you cancel your online next year, you can't play the Animal Crossing anymore. And if you want to keep playing it, you have to pay again for another year, if that's the only thing you want on the service. And now you're paying double what you would have paid if you just bought the Animal Crossing. So with what we have right now, I don't know if it is worth it. I'd, honestly, I might even lean towards it not being worth it. But then there's more things to think about. Like there's more 64 games coming, like Majora's Mask and F-Zero. So maybe that, depending on who you are, would push it over. But there's other things to think about. Like, I very much doubt they're just throwing Animal Crossing in here as like a random thing, and this is what the expansion pack is always going to have. 
and that's it, period, for the rest of all time. I think putting the DLC in here is showing us other things will come to this service. So maybe, you know, a year from now, we'll have another game get big DLC drop. Like, I don't know, Ash, let's just, just say Astral Chain for something random. Maybe that will also be in the expansion pack. So as long as you keep, you know, subscribing to Nintendo Switch Online and their expansion pack, maybe you'll keep getting the Nintendo DLC for free. And then eventually you might end up actually getting value out of a lot of this. So it's really confusing. It's not a clear cut answer, you know? It, it totally depends on you. And it also totally depends on Nintendo. So I don't think there's any shame in wanting this. I don't think there's any shame in thinking that it is worth it. And a lot of people will and will enjoy their $30 extra worth of what they get right now, you know, with what's there. But there's other people that have no value here whatsoever, that don't understand why anyone would pay for this. Or there's some people that might really want this, but they hate how bad the emulation is. You know, there's, it's so, it's so mixed. I think my biggest issue, you know, the emulation aside, the weird button layout aside, the value there or not aside, the only thing I actually have an issue with here is it's an online service. I think we're all getting really bogged down in the fact that the 64, Genesis, NES, NES, what games do they have to offer, whatever. Can we backtrack all the way to Nintendo are making us pay for online now and an online experience that they're still not fixing or adding or changing or improving like the actual online experience that this is all focused around this is it's moved away from being an online service to being just a game pass service and that's what we're paying for now but can we backtrack to like ditching the app and getting like actual voice chat and party chat in the game can we can we backtrack to like easier way to play games with our friends online in all of these Nintendo games. Having games that actually support Nintendo's online service and not releasing with like half cocked versions of an online experience. Like what is it we're actually paying for after all this time with their online? Because nothing has actually been improved and nothing has really changed. Messaging people on your friends list. Like how, how has it been three years? And I know so many of us have screamed at Nintendo to allow us to message our friends. I don't know, man. A lot of the argument has shifted around the price to what games are we getting? But for me, it's we're up to 50 a month now, which is half of what PlayStation and Xbox offer. But we don't even have half the features that those consoles offer, not even close. And sure, we have a bunch of games that we can emulate, old games that we can emulate, but both Xbox and PlayStation offer a series of first party current releases that you can download for free and experience if you sign up to their service. And I don't want to sit here and debate values and games and, you know, PlayStation versus Xbox versus whatever. That's not the conversation I'm trying to have. Just as a service, is Nintendo's online worth anything still? Games aside? I don't think so. But what do you guys think? Is this service worth it for you? I will say I had so much fun last night playing with Bob and that experience alone was worth $30. So I'm good. I liked it. <laughs> to end on a positive note, it's worth it for me. But is it worth it for you? Let me know down below. Is there a bigger issue here surrounding the Nintendo Online? Maybe. Let's talk about it. I love you all. We have a bunch more videos coming soon. I hope you're enjoying the games. And, um, yeah, that's it. Bye.